Hello everyone and uh, welcome, we are back. Welcome to uh, the return of the Pinkin Show. Uh, look where we are. We are down the pub, uh, no green screen. Uh, we can even wear Norwich City shirts. It's truly remarkable. Uh, this is the fine surroundings of the Coach and Horses public house uh, here in Norwich on Thorpe Road. And for the next half an hour or so, uh, we will talk loads of Norwich City. We are joined by our fine guests here today, uh, Norwich City season ticket holder, Chris Elliott, and former columnist for the Eastern Daily Press, Adam Aitken. Gents, how are we? You both well? Very good. Very yeah, good. We are now. We are now. Well, in the pub. Yes, it's the best way. Uh, now uh, things are going to be a little bit different uh, for us going forward. Um, there's no auto cue, so don't expect me to be as funny as I uh, used to be. Yeah. Uh, we won't be with you for as long either, but you know that's no issue. We we did toy with the idea of calling the show the Pink and Show Half Cut, but uh, we did think that might give you the wrong idea. Don't don't worry about the beers. Uh, but still, we will have the best informed Norwich City chat. There are now no breaks. That's good news. Uh, we also are live on the YouTube channel and you can still have your say with a message on the live chat feature on the YouTube feed uh, or you can post your questions and comments uh, direct to this phone here in the studio slash pub, which is the way it should be really, isn't it? Uh, okay, well, I hate to say it, but we uh, actually, our last show is at the end of August. Now, you may remember at that point, Norwich were actually in the bottom three, not doing too well. Still, September comes along, everything's rosy, brilliant. Now, I don't think that's our fault, but I guess we're gonna find out really, aren't we? Uh, anyway, here are the headlines with the help of Wesley Moulihan. Robbins Robert, City Avoid Manager and Player of the Month, curses. <laughs> City on <laughs> City on tour. More than 8,000 City fans snap up tickets for Wembley Cup tie. It's a Farkham Web evolution. Whoosh. Uh, sporting director opens up over his first six months in charge. A Remy deal for success. Young keeper signs on for extended stay. That's Remy Matthews. From Russia with love. Stop laughing, Adam. The World Cup dream lives on for Tim and Nelson, not so much for Scottish folk or Marley Watkins, sadly. And finally, those lucky linnets. Grant Holt and Simon Lappin have signed on for Kings Lynn Town and they've already made winning debuts. Here's to City fans' second Norfolk team. Seamless. Now, of course, if you guys can think of a better pun, or a City pun, than Wesley Moulihan for our delightful cow, uh, let us know, send us a message. Do as you uh, so will. Guys, let's talk football then, shall we? Uh, first of all, Daniel Farker and James Madison both missed out on the Manager and Player of the Month award curses or the awards. Are we, are we happy about that? Does I it matter? Th I think so. I think we had that such a ropey start to the season that we've come up the rails kind of unnoticed. And I think the less we talked about, the better probably. Um, I know it's a cliche about winning the awards is the kiss of death, but I think it's quite nice to we keep the, the spotlight on others for now. Yeah, it's remarkable actually how little anyone took notice of Norwich's improved form in September other than the gongs and being nominated for them but elsewhere it sort of disappeared under the radar really. I guess the table still doesn't show us even in the top six so you know from a lot of people's point of view they look at it they think mid-table probably expected us to be there um, so yeah let's just get on with it quietly and surprise a few people now. Uh, make sure you get your questions and comments into us we're, we're gonna have a, a little debate as well now because you, you asked us before we went on air Adam about whether I'm actually enjoying the football of this season and, and, and I know this is a debate that a few fans have had it's I'm not really sure no, we're no, enjoying it no I'm not I'm not and there is this there is this habit often that winning equals good and losing equals bad and it's a little bit less black and white than that um, clearly I'd rather be winning games than not winning games and it's better being mid-table than being in the bottom three um, I was very heartened by, um, by, by by the comments this week by Weber when he said it's work in progress I know it's a cliche again if he was saying this is where we want to be, I'd be very disappointed. Um, so I'm hoping things will improve, but I mean, the football has been very dull at home, hasn't it? It's, it's like the explosive element isn't quite there at the moment, is it? It's, it's quite patient, which is fine if you're going to explode every so often, but that hasn't happened, especially at home. But we're asking a lot, if we expect it to be better now, a month after the desperate state we were in, um, to fix the defence in the way that he has done is, is remarkable. Uh, and that does deserve manager of the month, to be honest, on its own. Yeah. To expect us to be playing lavish attacking football and scoring all the goals as well at the same time 
I think we are stretching credibility a little bit. So let's be grateful for where we've got to. Well, that's spot on. And no one was having that debate during August. Let's be clear. No one really cared. It was just getting us some points, please, for goodness sake. Um, World Cup qualifying, international break. That's always good fun. Is it? <laughs> Did anyone enjoy it? I mean, it all went over my head a bit. I wasn't that fussed about it. It goes on forever. I mean, it's two weeks. It feels like two months to me. Um, the way it all shuts down from having two games a week to having nothing. Um, yeah, I, I miss that. You know, that's one of the th big things about the championship is we get our regular fix of football every three or four days. It seemed a long time. It was pretty intense I in the lead-up to, up to I think the Ireland Wales game was fun because there were two teams we knew. Uh, but I, I just find international breaks tedious. And it breaks the <laughs> if, if you're winning games, you want to keep on winning. And, and if you're losing games, you want to get out of your system. There's never a good time to stop for two weeks. We'll definitely come on to that. Anyway. Yeah, well, I'll admit this. I watched the Scotland game, not the England game, because I didn't want to watch a dead rubber. And, you know, that's how it is. It, why watch an international game that's got nothing on it? I enjoyed the wales Ireland game, partly because you knew it was going to be a British game, partly because I want Wales to sort of, you know, get to Russia and have a swan song to his international career. Absolutely, which is why we are paying a slight attention to it. And uh, Tim Closer, I know, has, has mentioned how his dream, he's still hoping to be involved with Switzerland at the World Cup, even though he's on the yeah. fringes of it at the moment. Nelson Oliveira... Portugal actually qualifying at Switzerland. Well, that's a really good thing, isn't it? Because, I mean, I think Tim Close, we know, is a, is a consummate professional anyway. Um, Nelson Oliveira, you get the impression of one of these players who with an extra incentive to perform well. Um, not that he wouldn't anyway, but it gives them something to fight for, a bit of extra spark. So that could work in our favour. Shall we have a listen to Tim Closer uh, talking about his uh, international hopes with Switzerland? Dan, roll VT. As long as I'm not injured, I think I'm always in his mind. But as I said, as long as you're not in the first division somewhere it's, it's going to be hard to get selected but the dream is not uh, I'm not awake you know I still dream uh, of Russia um, I, there's still a, a slight chance that I can make it into the squad for that uh, tournament so um, but of course we need to qualify first but I think with this team and, and with the quality we are more than capable of um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working hard to just stay on his radar and, and be a possibility if he needs me. And that's all I can offer him at the moment because I know uh, we're playing in the second division, but I uh, enjoy it at the moment. I really do. Um, do we do we feel bad for uh, Scotland, Marley Watkins, Wales? I mean, Grant Hanley is, is now not going to have a World Cup to uh, aim for and hasn't really played much club football yet either. Well, not too much. I mean, I know I did confess to, to watching Scotland, but um, I'm not, you know, there's so much so much good stuff for us to talk about with Norwich City yet. Um, I'm not going to get too distracted about Russia. Well, we're definitely not talking about England either, because that, uh, that, was, that was tedious football. Uh, let's get back on to Norwich then. Uh, Stuart Webber did a load of interviews before the in, uh, during the international break. In fact, you can see a lot of what he had to say over on the Pink and YouTube channel. It's definitely worth uh, catching what he said. Gents, you both saw and heard what he had to say. What did you make of it? And what did you make of the job he's doing? Because it's now six months. Um, well, I, I'm eating humble pie to an extent. I, I was critical of him a few weeks ago. I just thought we had gone... We hadn't just stood still we were going backwards I felt we were worse in August and September than we were probably uh, early September than we were last season um, but he he speaks as a man with a plan and I think that if we've got a man with a plan we should let him see that plan through in the same way he said that Farkas here for the long haul and it wasn't going to get sacked after the Millwall game obviously he wasn't going to get sacked but he's confirmed that wasn't the case um, I think we should give him credit as well so and, and give him time to see it through so I was I was heartened by what he said I'm not, I'm not as gracious fan but I was heartened I think Stuart Webb is a very impressive guy um, I saw him speak in person at an event last week and um, for a young guy he's incredibly rounded mature as you say got a real clear strategy about what he's trying to do at Norwich City made some big bold decisions very early on and I think we've got ourselves a great leader here and I'll go out on a limb I think he's going to be doing this kind of job in the Premier League in the near future and I think you know I obviously hope it's with Norwich City I remember speaking to people before Stuart got the job and the one thing that came up was he's a man in a hurry and I think it what impressed me was that when he did come uh, in and, and spoke about it he 
however successful this job was going to be, he always saw it as being a job that would still last three, four, five years to get it to get it right. And that is, of course, a huge benefit to Norwich if it does come off. And much like with a player, isn't it? If the club grows and the person grows with them, that's in it for everyone. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm certainly not in the camp of people who, when they make a prediction, want to be proven right regardless. Uh, I thought it was pretty grim and I thought I wasn't a great fan of his but I will hold my hands up and say I got that one wrong that's the spirit Adam at the, moment, at the moment <laughs> at the moment at the moment that's fair enough uh, we have got a fantastic month coming up haven't we at Norwich City now that we've had the international break and we've had a rest for two weeks Arsenal in the cup we've got the derby coming up with Ipswich of course Wolves at home which is a big game it's exciting exciting month plenty of juicy fixtures to get our teeth into yeah a bit of uh, a bit of a trip down to the Emirates for a midweek game with, a, with an, a, an army of fans down there as well yeah, lots to look forward to now. And um, yeah, we, we go into it in good fettle. I just hope this break hasn't disrupted us in the same way as the post Millwall international break was beautifully timed. Let's hope this one doesn't turn it the other way. I think the derby is going to be huge. A few weeks ago, I thought that it's going to be a horrendous day out in Ipswich. Um, I find it remarkable that Ipswich had a great start to the season and we had a terrible start to the season and yet we're level on points with them. Um, albeit they've got a game in hand but it does show how we've prepped up the rails and I, I think this, this could be the make or break month I think if we can get through this month with what is it four, three out of four wins perhaps um, we'll be up on, on Cardiff Hills before we know it um, I, th- I, th- I think this, this could be it and if we can get something in that switch and we can, we can beat Wolves at home and beat Hull obviously Saturday then I think we are going to be flying It's really remarkable that Norwich avoided a, uh, a game against Ipswich in the first month because I have no doubt they'd have lost at Pullman Road Yes, and we've played them early. I think we've played them in September, quite a few of the most... It was August last season. Um, it's come well, you know, we're, cl- we're clinging on, well not clinging on, holding firmly on to an eight and a half year unbeaten run against Ipswich. And uh, yeah, you know, let's stretch that to at least another year and, you know, uh, and beyond. We should just touch on the ticket story, because they were, it, it was remarkable how quickly the tickets sold. Some fans weren't happy that you know, regular away travellers weren't given a precedent. I mean, did the club just misjudge it they haven't really said a lot they obviously made sure there were more tickets available I think it's simple misjudgment and these things happen I mean I know it's no consolation those who missed out uh, they have tightened up the how the tickets are done um, in recent seasons and I, I think they caught them out um, I, th- I, th- I was surprised just how much people are buying into this game actually because I'm more far more focused on on the league than this so I was slightly surprised they went so quickly um, but you know they live and learn there's still tickets available now so I think everyone who wants one has got one in the end so that's, that's the main thing isn't it that's the irony isn't it no one should really have missed out well, they shouldn't, but I, I, I cut the bit at the club a bit of slack on this one. That five thousand tickets going in a day for a, let's let, you know this isn't you know Man United away in a quarter final of the FA Cup, but it, it is people like me. Hands up here, you know it's people like me. You've got a young son. Um, it falls in half term week. It's lots of people like myself that see that as a brilliant way to take, have a family trip out and see you know see a good game. Our, our wonderful stadium too. It's a great place to go and watch some football. Uh, we've got to touch on Holt and Lappin. Maybe we should hear from them both first. Grant Holt, Norwich City legend, Simon Lappin, as popular as they come. Uh, both players signing on for Kings Lynn Town this week. We went to speak to them at the walks uh, earlier in the week, and here's what they both had to say. It's not going to be walking. If people think I'm just going to sign in, I'm going to walk straight into the, the first thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare dream that on anyone. I'll have to work harder than anyone to, to get my spot, and, and then it's up to me once I've got it to keep all of it. Yeah, like I say, you kind of mocked my dressing room question a little bit in the press conference, because, you know, the doors are probably the same size, as you <laughs> rightly said, but, but ultimately that it is a different dynamic that you're going to walk into, and, and I, you may have to consider that a little bit, will you? I don't think so. I don't think you ever have to do... You could say that when I went to Hibs, really, for, for going there. Do you know what I mean? They're just... You go in and, and people, the one thing I learned is you get older, because you know so many people, you've always bumped into someone along the way, and as you get older, everyone knows more about you. Um, but it doesn't change, it was more, it was probably worse when you walked in as a kid, because you didn't really know anyone, you didn't really know what to do, and you, you always kind of had to go and shine and you press. The one thing I've learned is if you're always yourself in a dressing room, just be yourself. Like people either gravitate, you know, they won't like you, but you can't change for anyone, you've got to just keep going, because what's worked for you for the last 18 years has obviously done somewhat well. I mean, this is an Norwich City reunion, isn't it, with you, Grant? <laughs> but also Ian as well, who uh, the club are doing really well under him. And you just mentioned how big a draw he is to to bring you here. I mean, what what kind of guy is he? Because he did, he did so well under Paul Lambert yeah, Norwich. I think that is the biggest draw. I've said that previously. Um, speaking to him, knowing the way he works, uh, he's coaching. He's now wanting to be a manager in his own right, and I'm sure he'll be very successful at that. I've had a little bit of success so far. There's still a long, long way to go here. Um, but the opportunity to come and work with him again 
um, after that successful time we had at Norwich City, as you mentioned, was, was just incredible and I can't wait to, to, to work with him again, as you say. Right, now uh, we are in a pub, as you may have noticed, making uh, excellent use of our new surroundings. Therefore, we thought it'd be a good excuse to have some fun and beer. Uh, so, we are starting a new game. It's called Flip the Bird. The bird being a canary. It's um, just about as good as we could come up with, uh, with puns. Uh, here's a sting. And that's the sting. Brilliant. Now, the premise is very simple, gents. Uh, you have, uh, you've had a chance to practice, which is good. We just oh, about managed. Barely. <laughs> barely. Um, you now have one minute uh, to flick as many beer mats as you possibly can. The question being, are you Robert Flick or Flicky Van Volswinkel? There we go. That's better puns. Look at you two so ready. Uh, so on director Dan's signal, three, two, one, go! And they're off. It's, a, it's an interesting start from Adam, who's lost concentration. He's lost a beer mat. Chris already has one. Chris has one, a cheeky arm there from Adam. I think he rather got in the way. Uh, Chris is not sure about the rules. Uh, Adam oh, almost picks one up there. But, uh, but we, uh, Adam somehow got two in his hands already. I don't know how that happened. Chris and, and Adam's moved his pint closer to him. I'm not sure that's a good idea, Adam, to be honest. Moving up. Is that to help your concentration? <laughs> Chris, Chris struggling a little bit here. No, I don't oh, I, I, Chris, Chris worried about the the uh, technique. Adam, Adam's. I think Adam caught that last one in his in his tummy. Oh, almost missed the beer. Uh, Adam's. I, I think Adam's just picking them up. Are you just picking them up? Chris, Chris has given up. Adam. Well, I think we've rather I lost. Down. I, 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 I think Chris has actually. Have you given up? Is this a surrender? <laughs> I bow down to the champion here. Adam, I, I, He's done it before. Uh, Zoe thinks Adam should down... Chris should down his pint? Who, who wants to down their pint as a forfeit? Adam's going to drink his as a celebration of his success. Time's up. Adam almost drunk his pint in the time. <coughs> there we go. That's, uh, that's what we do on the uh, Pinkin show now. Uh, Chris, what went wrong? Most of it. <laughs> Play, playing someone who looks like a professional at this game. Is he back next week? Because he's kind of keep it staying on now. Let's, let's be, I mean, you were just picking up bar mats at one point, and you've just downed your pint, Adam. You seem like a pro. Uh, well, yes. Um, yeah, I can do something. I found something I can do in life. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, well, well done, everyone. Uh, there we go. I, I reckon we can do that again, can't we? Definitely. Uh, right. Championship refresh, I think. So let's have a look at the uh, championship as it stands now, shall we? It has been a long time, so it's worth getting a, a refresh on the uh, standings. And we've got some paper to have a look, so that's good. Uh, as for the bottom of the table, it's been a disaster so far for Sunderland, apart from a Carra Road, obviously. Not, mu not much better for Birmingham. City head to Bolton in November. They are the only side yet to win in the division. Derby are surprising strugglers, as are City's next opponents, Hull, who sit 19th, uh, 17th. Sorry. At the top of the table, uh, the top half looks much better for Norwich, of course, at the moment. Uh, they are level on points with Ipswich, who do have a game in hand. Cardiff still set the pace, although they have started wobbling. Uh, Wolves and Aston Villa are my sides to watch, while Chris Wilder clearly has nothing to complain about whatsoever as the Blades sit third. And the fixtures, well, the championship restarts on Friday night, where Birmingham have a 6-1 defeat at Hull to make up for at home to the leaders. Fulham versus Preston looks intriguing as Alec Neal continues to impress with P&E. Uh, life remains hard for Reading as they head for Leeds. Ipswich get the Bramall Lane treatment while the weekend ends with a couple of tasty derbies at Molyneux and the uh, IPRO, or Pride Park if you like, respectively. And it is of course Hull who come to Carrow Road on Saturday. It's the first home game, gentlemen, in three weeks. Three weeks. Adam, you've got another pint, so that's good news. You don't have to down it, don't worry. I know you were going to then, but don't. Um, yeah, first home game in three weeks feels like a long time. Well, it does seem like a long time, but just going back to the tables, um, looking at them, it suddenly strikes you. There's no one really that strikes fear into me there. There's no team. I know Wolves had a good start, so Cardiff, but you look at that and you just think that if we just keep this run going, we should be okay. Um, Hull tomorrow's a, came after, you know, they, they, they smashed Birmingham, but then Birmingham are basket case, aren't they? So I think I think it's all looking good, and I think tomorrow will be Saturday will be will, will be uh, the chance to really climb up the table. Which I get the impression is what this month is actually all about coming up. Uh, there are teams there I look at, and I think I kind of in, in, intimated towards it. Teams that I think will fall away, teams that you think will really come strong. Do you see that as well, Chris? 
Yes, Middlesbrough were most of our tips, including mine at the start of the season. And um, you just think at some point that quality will shine through over a long season. Um, but it's a competitive division. But don't forget last year, everyone said we were the team who were going to come good at some point, and we never mm. did. So, you know, Middlesbrough, mm. we've had a quarter of the season now. Yeah. Uh, we can't keep saying they might get better at some point. They, no, don't look, point. they don't look like the team we thought they were going to be. Mm. I think the interesting thing with Middlesbrough is they're getting worse. The results are getting worse. And, and that, that happened to Norwich, didn't it? I know they had, they had a reasonable start, although they played a lot of fairly lowly teams. They had a very good September, and then the wheels just fell off. And despite having a really good manager, that amount of money brings the proportionate amount of pressure with it as well. And you just wonder, you know, Steve Gibson's a guy that tends to back his managers, but um, if they're at this position in, you know, come December, you know, that's when the hire or fire decision comes. And, you know, we know that doesn't always end well. I, s I still think there's a debate to be had over how good a manager Gary Monk is, but uh, that's for another day, that one. Uh, so, will Norwich end their run of goalless draws? this at home this weekend because it is it, back-to-back goalless draws uh, it's the first time it's happened outside the top flight since 1921 there's a stat for you in the league yeah I, th I, th I think we're due a few goals I think we're due a few goals we, we've, we've we've got the defence sorted um, as, as Chris was saying earlier on um, we've we, we can be a bit more expansive now we've we, we've stopped the rot effectively and I think it's time for a bit more creativity it depends which what team he plays of course but I think we, we, we should get a few goals tomorrow I think Hull will score um, so we need to score to get something from the game. Well, this is, uh, I think I'm writing my pink and column on this. As much as Norwich's momentum was halted, it was quite substantial momentum and it was backed on quite good things. Hull's momentum, one game, a 6-1 game, six one win over, as you said, a basket case in Birmingham. They'd have been desperate for another game straight after that, wouldn't they? They would. Um, it might say more about Birmingham than Hull, though, to be fair. Um, they've scored a lot of goals, Hull. I think they're one of the best scorers in the division. Um, but they're, equally, their defence is poor as well. So I think Daniel Fark is going to learn. That's the one thing he has shown already in a short managerial career at Norwich, is he's learning. Now, he knows. He won't have been happy with the... Um, he might have been happy with the results at Carrow Road, but he won't have been happy with the performances, and he said so. And he'll be thinking he needs to improve that. You can't keep grinding out nil-nils and one-nils forever. You're going to need to score two or three to win a game. And he'll have been spending the last two weeks thinking about how he can do that. And, and so far, he's shown he learns quickly. He does, actually, which is something I always thought Alec Neal did really well, too, especially in his early, early point of his reign. What would you have wanted Daniel Farker to have been working on over these two weeks? Because it was quite clear, wasn't it, after Millwall, Please give him a clean sheet. Bam, four on the four or five on the spin, wasn't it? What about this time round? For me, it's breaking, being more adaptable quickly. So the thing that I was really banging my head against the wall is when Burton came here for the game. They they just got beaten five at Leeds on the Saturday. They were only going to come here and put up a wall of a defence. We started with two defensive midfield players and we didn't make a substitution for 70 plus minutes. Now. The team should have been set up initially, one defensive midfield player, maybe two up top. Certainly at half-time, that should have changed. Now again, look at it tomorrow. I know Hull have had a great result, just gone. They're not going to come to play an expansive game. I'd be amazed. Um, so let's be more positive from the off and give ourselves 90 minutes to beat a team. Yes, yeah, so it's hard to be overcritical given what we've seen in the last few weeks, but I think a lack of a plan B has been a bit concerning. Um, you mentioned the Burton game there. I mean, going back to the Millwall game, um, I, I, was it Tessie brought on to shore things up when we were 4-0 down? Kind of thought that should be done at half-time, that kind of thing. And I think, and he's a young manager, so this is, a, this is a kind of observation rather than a criticism. But I just think that when we can all see after 15 minutes how a game is going, you get the impression that Fark is determined to see if his original plan will work rather than change it early on. Which I, th I think will get to the point where he is doing that more frequently. And maybe that's just part of the bedding in period. It's a learning curve. He's a young man. It's hugely, hugely so. Uh, I don't know whether I should say this or not, but uh, Hull haven't won on the road in 14 months. Thank you. That's well done. I mean, it's just I'm just informing. Well I'm done. informing the debate. Thanks for that. We were we were in a similar position a couple of years ago when they hadn't won for 40 odd matches, two years away, and beat us. Here come Norwich again. Well, let's hope not. Uh, just informing the debate. Just informing the debate. Uh, shall we have a look at the 11? So you guys uh, gave us uh, ahead. We put you in the dugout and we said, "Come on, what would you play?" Uh, you can have a look at them here. Uh, Adam, do you want to talk us through? Well, your yes. I mean, I, I I missed the Reading game. I know it's in the box. I missed it. I was away. Um, but uh, we obviously, well, the played well there. So I've stuck with the same team, but just I've I've I brought um, a wild shooting instead of uh, Murphy. I just think when he's come on this year, he's given. He's got a great combination of, of, of pace but also physique and I really like him um, and I think he was a surprising signing for us and 
I think most fans, I don't know about you, but most fans probably in the summer thought he'd been on the first ones out. Um, but he does have a presence about him, so I think he would he would help things tomorrow on a game where we need to, we need to take the game to Hull. You know, we're not trying to break playing the break tomorrow. We need to take the game to Hull. So that's that's why I've gone for him. I'm not entirely sure it was just. Uh fans who thought that Yannick Korshaw might not be at the club uh, this season. Uh, Chris, should we have a look at uh, yours? Yeah, so I've gone for Steeperman at left back. Really liked what I've seen from him in the few games he's played. Um, I've gone for Harrison Reed in the middle of the park rather than Alex Tetty. I just think Alex's best days are behind him. Um, in his first couple of games, Harrison and I was really impressed with him. And so I think I'd like to see him and Tom Tribal together. Um, Comparing to Adam's team, I've stuck with Josh Murphy for the time being, but I really like what I'm seeing. We're now seeing the player we bought for, for, in Yannick Wiltshire, whereas for many months we didn't see that. It's interesting you've gone for Oliveira up front, because I, I, mm -hmm. he, I, I prefer him to, to Jerome, but I think having broken his duck now, Jerome, um, last against Reading, I think mm -hmm. that we should stick with him. I, Alex Neil had this habit, I think, of a player scoring and then being dropped next week, and I thought it was a bit strange. And sometimes the first score breeds confidence, so that's why I start with Jerome. I, I would imagine Daniel will start with Jerome for, for that very that very point. And we hope Marco Stieperman is, is fit, because he, I think he'd just become a dad, and also had a bit of, bit of an injury. So... He's actually one of those who's impressed me. And you actually, I looked at the stats this week and him and Mario Vrancic, although you watch them and sometimes you think it's going to take you a bit of time to adapt. Actually, what they're producing in terms of numbers, which we love, obviously, have been pretty good, pretty influential. And it's, it is early, but if you look at the strike rate of the summer signings, who's doing well, um, who's not doing well. Yeah. We're definitely in credit now, having seen a couple of months worth of them. Um, some of them haven't had a lot of game time. But Tribal, Steeperman, um, Zimmerman, clearly, um, you know, there's, there's a lot there that are affecting the first team in a really positive way. Um, and for most of them, it's a big cultural shift as well. I think Tribal's a great find. I think he's a fantastic player. And he's, he's um, I mean, at this level, clearly. Um, uh, but I think... I, I think our defence is sorted. I think our midfield is sorted. I, I, I think that we are... We've got the nucleus of a very, very good squad, and I think the signings have been good. We've so often sat here and said that the signings have been rubbish in the transfer windows, and I think we've got it right this time. Um, and that's credit to the two guys at the top. It's interesting your point on Harrison Reed, because Harrison Reed hasn't had a chance to play with two holders, and a lot of the time earlier in August, the issue was that he had no one alongside him and he was covering the whole width of the pitch. Is there an element of some of the players who have missed out since August? wishing that they'd have been involved in a side that was looking a lot more tight. I'm, you know, I'm thinking about Russ, Russell Martin, I'm thinking about Marcel Franca. You know, it's not necessarily those guys' fault that everything was so exposed in front of them in August. I'm sure there is. Um, and it's about, it's about creating that right recipe in terms of personnel and formation. Um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we've both picked a 4-2-3-1 mm. and I, I think we can be confident that Daniel Farker will yeah. do that as well. Yeah. You know, that's one of his recipes and it probably explains why he went with two holding midfield players against Burton when, you know, my instincts were, no, don't do it. Um, he feels that's part of the success. Um, and so that's why I think we can expect to see that again on Saturday. Well, uh, apologies if you're having any trouble with the with the stream, uh, because there's a few messages coming through. I am getting the messages. That bodes well for future. But uh, keep, keep being patient, please. We do appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to finish with one person I want to talk about because I've written a lot about him in the last two weeks, which is James Madison. Because in all the time when we have rather um, decried Norwich's recruitment of recent seasons, that piece of business is really showing up with a, a young man who looks completely at home in the championship already. He, I mean, I don't know. How old is he? He's 20. He's 20 and about 35, isn't he? And he looks, no, he, look, he looks a package. He looks like he's been doing it forever. He doesn't look like a, a youngster just coming to the team and made his breakthrough. He looks like a really, really established player. Um, he's cool on the ball. Um, we, we've seen his couple of great goals of his recently, but he just looks so assured of the ball. Uh, and I think he's, he, he's going right to the top, I think. I remember in pre-season he was playing in one of the three sort of deeper midfielders. And I was like, what's this about? The guys are number 10. And he's like, no, this is where he wants to play and this is where he can play. Goodness me, can he play there? I mean, it, it sort of caught me out just how good an all-round footballer he is. He is a class act. Um, going back right to the start of the show, I'm glad he didn't get player of the month um, because I've no grounds for saying this, but I think he's probably got a little bit of an ego. And I don't need, I don't think we need to be putting gongs on his, you know, front, you know, in his front room right now. Let's keep him grounded because he's got to do this for 10, 15 games not two or three. 
it's a hard one, isn't it? Because with with Josh Murphy, of course, we had a little bit of controversy around him towards just before the international break. And you, a player like James Madison, he does need an edge. He needs that. But how you keep that wound in just enough so that you know they're sort of pulling really tightly on the leash. We have a few players with a nose, don't we? I mean, Oliveira's got a nose to him, hasn't he? As we saw at the start of the season at the Fulham game, um, in a different kind of way. Um, you mentioned Murphy just then. I think it's good to have a mix. You don't want a, a, te- a team of Saints all the time. You never get anything wrong. Um, but I think I think that uh, I, again, I've never met the, ne- never met the man, but I get the impression that Farker will not tolerate any nonsense, and I think that's great. And I think if you have Farker on the one hand with his stability and the players who are kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit, that's quite a healthy attention there. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I can assure you, Daniel Farker would not take uh, much much messing around from them. And it is interesting because some managers have had a squad where, in actual fact, they've been quite easy to manage. They've all been so lovely together, and they just keep getting beaten. And this way around, as Adam says, the characters are there. Daniel's being worked quite hard in terms of managing them and keeping them happy and ideally they'd probably want an even tighter group and a smaller group than they've got. Yes, I mean again going back to something Stuart Webber said last week is the thing he liked about the Josh Murphy incident was the fact that it was some of the senior players that actually had the first word with Josh, brought him into line and actually didn't need to be Daniel, Stuart or anyone else there. You know that bodes well, that they, they recognise his talent, it was done in the right way um, but it's almost self-managing and that's, uh, that says a lot about a good team spirit there. It does indeed, right. Uh, I think we're almost done, but I think the one remaining question is for predictions for Saturday, as we always like to ask. Adam seems to be passing that over to Chris quite distinctly. Well, I I agree with what you said earlier, Adam. I think there's goals in the game, um, and and I'm quite relaxed about us conceding one, so I think we're going to score three in reply. I was going to say 3-1 as well. I was going to say that. Okay, well, obviously definitely not Hull's first win away from home in 14 months. Definitely not, definitely not. Uh, that's it from us at the Coach and Horse. God, this is nice doing it at a pub, isn't it? Could get used to this. Uh, now, remember, you can catch uh, all this show. If it didn't quite uh, work on the feed, you'll be able to watch it all and it'll be absolutely fine, I can guarantee you. Uh, all the rest of our superb Norwich City content, it's all on the Pink and YouTube channel. Uh, you can also catch loads of videos over at the Pink and Facebook page too. And our website, of course, which is pinkin.com. That includes clips and analysis from Colney on Friday, which is the pre-match press conference ahead of Hull's visit on Saturday, when, of course, me, David Freezer, and Paddy Davitt will all be at Carrow Road to uh, build up the game, give you the team news, and, of course, bring you all the fallout and reaction. Thank you. Thank you to the crew who've done a wonderful job, especially Gimbal Cam. That was awesome, Gimbal Cam. Uh, Thank you very much to the Coach and Horses pub. Thanks to Chris and Adam for joining us on the show. Much appreciated, gents. Uh, And thank you for watching and getting involved and being patient with us. Uh, The Pink and Show will be back with you live again next week from 7 p.m. here at the Coach and Horses, if they let us in. Uh, And if you want to come here and join us, have a look at Gimbal Cam. Ring Wes Moulahan's bell, you can do it all. Uh, come and grab us here at 7 o'clock next Wednesday, and we will see you right here. Uh, until then, here's to a good old Tigers Morning on Saturday. Good night. <laughs>